Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about how to identify the contributions of your research. Now before we continue, if you like this video, you can hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel. Let us begin. How to identify the contributions of your research? The first thing is you need to look at uh, the problems that you have identified. Meaning to say, you need to re-look at your problem statement. And that will be the starting point to think about the contribution of your research. Now here are the three main contributions or three common contributions of any research. The first one is theoretical contribution. Your research might be providing uh, additional explanation on the theory that you use. Maybe because if you look at the past literature, there wasn't a uh, very clear on the explanation of the theory. Or maybe your research is expand the theory. Or it could be applying the theory in a new area. Or maybe your research is to improve the theory because based on your problem statement, you found that actually the theory has some uh, disadvantages or some, some areas that is not clear, or maybe it has some weaknesses and your research actually helped to improve the theory. The second one is practical contributions. To whom? Well, it depends on the research that you are doing. Maybe it provides some um, additional uh, a guide, um, guidance or uh, information that can help practitioners to work better. It might help the policy makers to make uh, more effective policies, or maybe it is some information that can help the public or the community at large. So the practical contributions is very much depending on the kind of research that uh, you are doing. Now, the third one is the one that I want to highlight today because um, there was uh, some people, uh, people actually requested this methodological contributions. So what are the possible methodological contributions? You need to look at the methodology that you use. Um, so the starting point would be to look at the past studies, people that have done the studies in a particular area. Uh, what was the research design that they have used? And in your case, what is the new research design that you have adopted? Maybe, um, for example, in previous studies, people usually use pre-test and post-test quasi-experimental um, or research design, but you added in a diary, for example. Or maybe you use a new data collection tool. For example, in this case here, uh, this is based on my uh, research that I've done, which you can find the link in the description below. I use diary to collect time series data because usually diaries are used to collect qualitative data. But in my case, I use diary to collect time series data. So that is something new. Okay, so the third one is triangulation. Now, triangulation is actually a big uh, topic. I can't finish this in this one or two minutes. You can actually go and explore uh, other resources. But triangulation simply means you think about triangulation. Uh, it could be data triangulation, it could be method triangulation, or it could be interpretation triangulation. All right, so previous studies, actually no one used triangulation, but you're using triangulation in your methodological um, design. So these are methodological contribution. So before you write, then you have to go back to look at the past studies and to identify um, the method, uh, the methodologies. Okay, so that will help you to write your methodological contribution. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope to see you all in my next video. Remember to subscribe. Bye.